my name is Derek from Tomcat Gas Trading and welcome to another episode of ACS Revision in less than 10 minutes. Hopefully. Now in this video we're going to be looking at ventilation and there is no way on this planet I am going to be able to do ventilation in less than 10 minutes. So we're going to break it up into sections. But before we get onto the video, why don't you subscribe and don't forget to hit that notification bell because you want to know from YouTube when we're uploading these videos. So, only got 10 minutes for this one, so let's get on with it. Now, let's talk about the basics for ventilation first. So, BS5440 Part 2 is uh, all about ventilation and that's for appliances not exceeding 70 kilowatts net that's important the building regulations we're going to be referring to is building regulation part f for ventilation and the way i've always told people to remember that is f for ventilation it works trust me <laughs> Uh, we can also look at the gas safety installation and use regulations, so we can check on them. They were updated only two years ago. And basically what ventilation is, it's split up into different appliances. So we've got open fluid appliances, we've got room sealed appliances, and we've got flueless appliances. So we're going to look at the three different sections. First one we're going to look at is open fluid. Now, adventitious ventilation. What is that? Well, basically, adventitious ventilation is the free air we've got in a room coming through the windows, coming through the doors, coming through the floors. So they say in houses built before 2008, we could have up to seven kilowatts of free air in there. After 2008, because of double glazing, loft insulation, floor insulation, then we can't take this advantageous ventilation. How do we get to this advantageous ventilation? Well, we need five centimeters squared of free air per kilowatt over this seven. So if we do five times seven, that's 35 centimeters squared. So advantageous ventilation actually comes out at 35 centimeters squared. So for open fluid appliances, the first seven kilowatts is free. Like I say, we're looking at open fluid now. We'll look at the others later. So let's have an example of putting this into some kind of context. So we've got a 30 kilowatt gross boiler open fluid installed in a room. So that question is telling you one, what the kilowatts is, whether it's gross or net, two where it's installed and three what type of appliance is it so from that description we can work out what we need so because we know it's gross the first thing we need to do is turn it to net because since 2000 we've always used a net figure i remember it well i remember it changing over so if we have 30 divided by 1.11 because turning gross to net is 1.11 for natural gas, it comes out that we need 27.02 kilowatts to find the ventilation for it. So 27.02 minus this advantageous air of seven kilowatts comes out at 20.02 kilowatts. And then we need to take this 20.02 and times it by five which gives us 100.13 centimetres squared of free air as a minimum. And we could round that up to 101 centimetres squared to give it a full figure. So that's quickly looking at that. Let's move on because we've only got 10 minutes. Now then, let's talk about multiple appliances, open fluid appliances, remember. So in this house, we have two 30 kilowatt net open fluid boilers. We've got one 6.9 kilowatt net open fluid fire, and they are installed in a room. So the question has told us all the information we need. It's net, so it's not gross, so it doesn't need to be turned to net, so we don't need to do the divide by 1.11. And it's installed in a room. That'll become apparent when we look at other places where these can be installed. So we have 30 plus 30, 
plus 6.9 is 66.9 kilowatts net. Now then, what we can do now is minus the 7. So we don't minus the 7 for each individual appliance because you can only add adventitious air for one appliance. So even if you had two or just two appliances, you would add them together and minus the seven. Not minus seven for both appliances. So then we would have 55.9 kilowatts, 59.9 kilowatts times five, because remember you need five centimeters squared of free air per kilowatt, gives us 299.5 centimeters squared of free air, or you could round it up to 300. So that is the ventilation for multiple appliances. The same appliances, open flued. Now let's go one step further. Let's get a little bit more technical. So this is one appliance installed away from the vent. So it's in a room further away from the actual outside vent. So this is the outside and these are the two rooms. Now then, couple of things. First thing, always try and install an outside vent high up so it doesn't blow cold air over the customer so the customer doesn't block it. That's the first one. Next one is the vent has a minimum height off the floor so the bottom of the vent to the floor level don't put them any lower than 300 because you could get snow, rain, leaves blocking them. Okay. Now what we've got here is the path of the air coming in for combustion. Now you know this vent is low down and this is the wall separating the two rooms and we cannot go higher than 450 mil off the floor because you don't want to spread smoke in a fire. So that will keep the fresh air low down. Okay, don't put it high up, keep it low down. So we have a 30 kilowatt boiler here but it's 30 kilowatt net. So it's what we've just done. It's 30 minus the 7 times 5 is 115 centimetres squared. So vent 1 is 115 centimetres squared and vent 2 is 115 centimetres squared. Okay, so pretty straightforward with that one again. Now, if we go to or more rooms, we need to install the vents 50% larger than the outside vent. So vent 1 is for the 30 kilowatt boiler, so vent 1 will be 115 centimetres squared. Vents 2 and 3 will be 50% bigger than vent 1. Not 50% bigger than each other, 50% bigger than vent 1. So they would be 172.5 centimetres squared. So 115 for 1, and 172.5 for vents 2 and 3. So how did we get there then? So let's do the example. So we've got 30 kilowatt net minus the 7, because we're in a room, is 23 kilowatts, times the 5, that's where we get the 115. And the way I work out the 50% bigger, because maths ain't my strong point, if you've watched any of my videos you know, spelling and maths, so 115 divided by 2 is 57.5, then add on the 115, so it comes to 172.5 centimetres squared. It's as easy as that. And that's the 10 minutes up, I think. So if you want to watch any more of these videos on ventilation on my longer versions, then nip over to the channel and have a watch of those. But if you've liked this video, why don't you give me a thumbs up or leave a constructive comment down below. If you want me to do any other subjects in 10 minutes, put down in the comments below. Some of you guys already have, asking for ventilation and stuff and controls. So that's why we're doing it. Well, but have you subscribed? If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe because it helps. And don't forget to hit that notification bell because I release videos mainly on Mondays and Wednesdays. All I've got left to say is, thanks for listening, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next 10 minute. Cheers, guys.